Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. I recently had a conversation with my friend, Kelly Tayen, and Kelly is just this remarkable, God-fearing, God-loving woman who helps women with their beliefs to grow in their faith to become more confident, to believe in themselves and all of the gifts that God's given them. And during our conversation, we decided that we should collaborate. And what better way than to be guests on each other's podcast? Well, we decided to keep it simple and we would have a raw and real conversation and share it on both of our shows. So that is what you're getting today. You are getting that conversation with Kelly and I, where we just kind of tell it all. We admit that things aren't always easy. I share how I'm at a point in my life where things are pretty overwhelming and stressful. But what happens in that situation? Well, I rely on my faith and I rely on Jesus to carry me through. And Kelly is going to share about her book and about that one prayer and how prayer is the answer to just about everything in life. And maybe everything, actually. And we dive into how to grow your business without social media, of course, because that's always the topic of conversation with me. And we also talk about mindset. Oftentimes, we don't even realize we have a a mindset problem or a hiccup with mindset. But we dive into that today, too. And Kelly shares some great strategies. I share some strategies and you are going to be able to walk away with so much value and strategies that you can start implementing in your daily life and business right away and start seeing powerful results. Welcome to the Robin Graham show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. So hi, Robin. How are you today? Hey, Kelly, I am good, and I'm super happy to see your beautiful smile. You too, and we're both wearing black today. It's so funny. <laughs> um, black is my staple I'm doing things on camera for some crazy reason. Otherwise, it's hot pink. But hey, guys, welcome to Addicted to the Climb today, and we're doing another, we're actually doing a conversation of real talk on my show, and on Robin's show. Robin, introduce your show. Yes, the Robin Graham show. And I am Robin Graham, the host. And this is such a great opportunity to collaborate, Kelly. I think that we both work with incredible women and we have both had windy, very obscure journeys. And I think faith has been such an integral part of both of our lives to get to where we are today. So Mm -hmm. I... I'm very excited to be able to have this conversation and really inspire people to step into their God-given gifts and just all that goodness that comes with that. Oh, amen. You're speaking my language. And that's why we came together to just, again, inspire you and empower you on your journey, whether you're an employee working in the workplace or you own your business. You know, I am about faith. I'm all about praying, leading, and empowering people to just not quit. Don't give up. Let's stand on our word. And so that's what we're going to dive in today. And I don't know where you want to start, but I think we can just jump in with how we how we do the things we do without really feeling overwhelmed. Well, we do feel overwhelmed at times. Let's be real. This is a real yeah. conversation. Yeah. But- How do we continuously pick ourselves back up and get back on the train to keep going? I say climbing higher. So why don't you start, Robin? Tell us, um, jump in a little bit more about your business and your day-to-day and how you do continue the journey moving forward without feeling so much stress. How do you work in that way? Let's go from Mm. there. You know, Kelly, this is such a good question because I think the reality is I do get overwhelmed. And I'm actually in one of those seasons in my life where we have some big stressors in our in our family. And as a result, I do feel a little heavy, a little overwhelmed. And it's it's funny because I was telling you before we started, right, about I'm coordinating this Bible study at church. And it's like a part-time job, almost full-time job, honestly. And I have been 
thinking to myself, my gosh, I can't do this all. And I, and I can't do it alone. Yes. So to your question of how do I keep it all together to move my business forward? It's prioritization. And that number one priority is every morning being in the word, actually opening my Bible, doing a Bible study, and then journaling around what I learned, praying, asking God for that clarity, the guidance, the wisdom, the knowledge that I need to be able to put one foot in front of the other throughout the day to serve my clients with my whole heart and to give them the wisdom that they're craving and they need and want and desire to be able to move their businesses forward. I'm a business growth strategist and coach. I work primarily with Christian coaches, life coaches, health coaches, you name it, and service providers. So in those sectors, right, We're all dealing with other people. We're serving other people, helping other people. And so there are a lot of demands. And it's very important to me to be able to help other people move forward. I don't define success as a dollar sign or a dollar amount. I define success by impact. And I think when we're like that, we tend to take all that on ourselves. So it really does become about prioritizing making sure I'm grounded in what my purpose is through yeah. God's calling and then staying focused on the scriptures so that I can throughout the day say, okay, God, I know you have a plan for me. I know you have a purpose for me. And that is to give me, to prosper me and give me hope in a future. But right now I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Oh so give me that strength I need to go forward. So how about you? Yes. Oh my gosh. Everything you just said, I'm so fired up because that has been my practice. I believe that how we go about our day, if we don't make those little changes, if if our days are being chaotic, right? I used to live in chaos. I know what it feels like to just run around my hair on fire. And I had to learn to start my day grounded, just what you said. And for me, it's prioritizing the same as you, prayer, reading my Bible, you know, going about praying over my kids, reading my Jesus calling, whatever that is, whatever books I'm reading. Sometimes I throw in a couple different things to read that are Christian based. That's how I pull up for the day. And that Mm -hmm. me grounded that no matter what happens in my days, whether the days get ahead of me or I'm feeling overwhelmed or burdened, stress, I still feel the peace from God that keeps me sane and stable because yes, it it is real. We all go through stressful moments, but I feel making that a priority can absolutely change everything for you. If you just start with that, maybe you're not doing that right now. Maybe you're running out of the house and finding your days are just so stressful. You're overwhelmed. You can't catch up. Try starting your day with prayer. See how that works because we're fighting battles every single day, right? I mean, every single moment we want to give up or quit and the mind plays tricks on us. So getting grounded in faith is a priority for me because it's changed my entire life. Prayer has changed my entire life. And prayer is part of my business plan. It's a business tool. It's a strategy I use. That's how I coach women because without it, for me, I wasn't getting anything done. I was like a squirrel running around. And I love how you (laughs) define it, it, it's so true. I'm like, where's the next nut? I'm like, looking all, you know, <laughs> literally, that's me. And <laughs> prayer has really just been a, a force in my life in so many ways to just keep me sane, keep me grounded, keep me focused, and help me to lead well, like you mm-hmm. said. And I love how you define success because for a while there, way back, I did think success was all about the dollar and I chased the dollar. And I was finding that. It, it just wasn't working. I was feeling very unfulfilled. And I know that the more I impact someone's life, that's success to me now. I love when a woman comes into my atmosphere or my coaching and we pray together. She feels empowered to go about her day. I'm like, I did my job. I feel so successful in that way. So I'm, we are just so aligned in so many of those areas, working with women. And yes, I mean, we have our ups and downs, but it's all about getting back up and doing it again, 
in having God by your side to partner with him. I think that's what has gotten me here to this point in my life, holding his hand, partnering with him in all areas, not just some. Oh my gosh, so much, so much truth there. And I think what you just said is really key, right? It's having that relationship with him. It's Mm -hmm. not just assuming he's this, you know, thing out there that when we have a problem, we can go to, but it's good times, the bad times, you know, the happy times, the sad times, it's all times to have that relationship where we can have a conversation with him. Like we're having a conversation between the two of us today now. Okay. Kelly prayer, prayer, prayer. Right. And I know that is so big for you and it's big for me, but a lot of people say, and I've heard this so many times in different, you know, audiences, different places. I just don't know how to pray or it just doesn't seem like I'm getting answers. I would love for you to share because you have a book on prayer and I would love for you to share just some insight on how can people go from that place of feeling like, I don't know how to pray. My prayers aren't answered or whatever, whatever they may be feeling. Mm. What do you say to them? That is a great question. And, you know, prayer has become such a force in my life, but I can relate to what you're saying in so many ways, because at first I want to say this, prayer is just a conversation. Like you said, it's the way we communicate to God. So there is no right or wrong way to pray. It's literally, he's our father. He's our brother. He's our comfort. He's our strength. And he wants to just hear from you. So It's just talking to him about what you're going through in the day. So I started with very vague prayers back in the day. You know, Lord, bless my food, bless my family, keep me healthy and strong. So, you know, it's not necessarily getting answers. But then I was like, okay, I had watched my mom in the way she prayed growing up. And she suffered with rheumatoid arthritis. That's a whole other story. But I watched her faith become so strong in her life and her prayer life become her strength. And I know she was getting answers from God. So I got more specific with my prayers and more bold in my praying. And what that looks like is God wants to know exactly what do you want, child? Like sometimes we are so vague that we're not asking for specifics in our life. Like maybe it's a financial breakthrough. Pray for that. It's okay. God wants to work with you. He wants you to be abundant. Maybe it's your marriage and you need answers. Go to him in that prayer. Be specific in what you're praying. That's changed the game for me. Getting specific. That's why I wrote the book, The One Prayer, because I believe on one prayer until we get an answer. Keep praying your prayers until you get an answer. God will show up whether he closes the door or opens another one. You will find an answer if you're focused, if you become more intentional with your prayers. And over time, this this doesn't happen overnight. Like for me, I started with the vague prayers and now my life has become one big prayer, Robin. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) I I never thought I would be like my mom, but I actually am like my mom. Mm -hmm. And it's it's funny because when I started praying small, I wanted more answers from God. I wanted to hear him more and more and more. So I just find myself praying about all things now, today, currently. And again, there's no right or wrong way to pray. It's talking to him about everything in your life, whether you're stressed. I can't take it, Lord. Like, you know, talk real to him. Yeah, yeah. And that's how you have a relationship with him. That's how your relationship can grow with God, whether you're trying to build a business, you need more clarity in the direction you're supposed to be going. That's all the things you can pray. There's so many things we can pray about. It's never ending. And you'll find the peace and the comfort and the clarity will happen for you. I promise. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah, the same really. And it's the one thing that I, that I've incorporated and I think it's, it's Paul. And I want to say it was in, Philippians or Galatians, maybe it's Galatians, um, where he says, you know, with every, with everything, and and he was speaking of anxiety for us not to be anxious about everything, but in, but in everything, give thanks and ask God for help. 
And so I've incorporated that gratitude into my praying where if there is something I need, it's thank you for everything that's led to this moment, you know, whatever that is. And then asking for what it is that I currently need or need direction on or, you know, whatever the case may be. And so I think that that gratitude kind of grounds us. And, you know, they say you can't be anxious and grateful at the same time. And so that gratitude has been a really big game changer for me in terms of my prayer life. Oh my gosh, same. That has changed everything for me too. And I love that you just said that. But Robin, I would love to flip a little bit on and ask you a couple questions about, I know you work with Christian entrepreneurs and women in business, um, but I want to flip it over because I love how you talk about not necessarily having to be on social media. Can you, <laughs> I, on, I, I, can you speak on that? Cause I know a, a lot of women, even just yesterday, I was in a conversation with a business owner. She's like, I got to make all these reels and I'm so stressed and I don't even know what I'm doing. So for all the business owners listening right now that feel they have to be on social media, doing all the things, it's very stressful because sometimes there's just too many options. And I know mm -hmm. that really causes women to stop dead in their tracks and not move forward because there's just too many options. Mm -hmm. How do you guide women in, in that area to not really focusing on that as a purpose-driven Christian woman that wants to yeah. successful and thriving business? Yeah. So there's a couple of things. The reason that I, it's not that I hate social media. It's not that I am, you know, completely off of it or against it. Yeah. However, what I have seen so often with women is, and I think it's partly by nature, that we compare ourselves to other people. or mm -hmm. And then what happens is we begin to doubt, well, if they're already doing this, then there's not going to be enough clients for me. Or they're so successful, I'll never be that successful. And imposter syndrome sets in. And any time that we are in a place of doubt, comparison, imposter syndrome, we aren't trusting fully in God, right? And I've experienced this in my business. And when I left social media and I got rid of that distraction that was taking me into those negative places, which I, I think it's just, it's, it's not that there's something wrong with me. Everybody that I've worked with has said, I don't want to be on social media. And I've seen it where they're trying to start their business and they go on social media thinking they have to, because that's what they have been told. We're always shoulded, right? Um, and then this happens to them and they begin to procrastinate. So they're not able to put their effort into taking the action, the intentional action that will actually increase their visibility and mm -hmm. attract clients. The messages begin to get convoluted. So their personal brand isn't differentiated anymore. They are losing contact with their best fit clients because they're distracted and they're trying to be something that somebody else is that they've seen on social media because they're striving for that same level of success. So there are so many ways we can grow a business without it. I mean, if you think about it, hundreds of years, people grew businesses without social media, right? Yeah. So can we still do that today? Yes, we can. There are so many strategies. I am a lover of search engine optimization and having your website as part of the foundation for your business. If you start there, you have, it's like, um, it's, it's in Matthew where, you know, Jesus talks about the man who built his house on the rock compared to the man who built his house on the sand. Mm -hmm. If we build our house or our house, our business on a solid foundation, like a website, and you think of that as a house on a rock, that's not going to go away. We own that platform. We can create as much content as we want, and we can be very strategic and map out a search engine optimization strategy so that all the search engines can find us. YouTube yes. is a search engine. Pinterest is a search engine. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many ways that we can have a digital marketing strategy without having to put forth all this effort to create these re reels or dance on the screen or whatever it is, you know, yeah. and because I, I don't enjoy that stuff. And... Yeah. So there's that. And then there's also like doing what we're doing right now, yeah. building relationships, relationship yes. marketing is key because what happens when we build these relationships, we have collaboration opportunities like we're doing today. There's referrals like, like we've done, like, it's just the opportunities are endless. 
There's networking, there's speaking, there's having a podcast, there's being a podcast guest, there's blogging. So there are so many strategies that are available to us and that we can build that foundation on. And then if we want to use our content that we've created on our own platforms, this evergreen content, then we can share it on other platforms like Instagram or Facebook. But the reality is we don't want to be subjected to somebody else's algorithm. We, because if it goes down or goes away or you're hacked, what happens? You can't even reach anybody. So using those platforms to, to guide people to your email list, your website, those are key strategies. Oh my gosh. So good. So good. (laughs) Everything that you just said, because, and you unpack, I just want to unpack a little bit. The comparison, yes, is key, but also for the one, the business owners right now listening, you have to know your gifts and what you're good at. If video is good for you, then just do that. I want to just encourage the listener right now to zone in on maybe just one thing. If you're feeling scattered, that squirrel brain, then you're trying to do everything and it's not working because remember what we do all the time is the results we're going to get all the time. So if something's not working, that means something needs to change. And I encourage you to, to, one thing that Robin said, choose one thing, whether it's, maybe it is making reels and that's what you like to do because you like being on camera. Try that and try and stick to it though. It Or it's, there's just so, getting on podcasts, community, But I do want to touch on community for a minute because I know so many women that own businesses feel very alone. They can be Mm -hmm. a solopreneur, can be very lonely at times, but that's up to you to do the collaborate with people because I promise you it will change the game. Even having a coach, if you don't have a coach, someone that you're bouncing ideas off, maybe it's a mastermind that you need to be in. Because sometimes you have to invest in yourself to reap incredible rewards and have massive results that are different from what you've had in the past. There's always a time in our career when we have to assess what's working, what's not working, and make the appropriate changes or else a year is going to go by, two years are going to go by, and you're going to be pulling your hair out. So, So, I mean, I think community is the key, what you said. I believe in it. I believe in tapping into other people's, you know, um, following too, like me and you being on each other's podcast. These are all opportunities if you're trying to build a business to get your name out without scrolling on social media all day and try (laughs) to upload that one post that somebody might see at that time that you posted. So, you know, I just love talking about it because I know social media can be exhausting for so many people. And- Mm -hmm imposter syndrome. It's real. I know Mm -hmm. my daughter, she's 25. She came off Instagram almost five years ago. Imagine as a 20 year old and she was glued, glued to it. It was just, she goes, mom, I can't do it anymore. It's making me feel bad about myself. And so find other ways. If it is making you feel bad about yourself to, you know, either delete the people that make you feel bad and follow the ones that encourage you. Because, you know, there is good to it. Like you said, I don't hate it. We have to be relevant, of course, in our businesses. But I think finding the ones who encourage you and get you fired up and listen and watch those people because Mm -hmm. they, your spirit will just be lifted instead of deflated. So I Mm -hmm. love all that that you said. So inspiring. Yeah. And Kelly, I think what you just said too, the, to tag on to that per se is knowing our identity in Christ makes Mm -hmm. a big difference because if we're going in there looking for ideas, thinking we're not creative enough, so we need to search for ideas. Or if we're going and we're, we're constantly looking at people that we think are better than we are, whether that's physical appearance, content wise, success wise, whatever that is, we have to remember like, who did God create us to be? What has he called us to? And what does he say about us? You know, we are chosen. We are loved. We are redeemed. We're adored. There are, we're, we're radiant. There are so many things that he says about us in scripture that if we, if we focus on those things versus focusing on 
the world will be less likely to go down that track of comparison or imposter syndrome because do, do, does it matter what the world says? Nope. <laughs> we we want to be respected, but at the end of the day, our goal should be to honor him. So if he's calling us to be off of a platform, right. and and here's the 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 cue, right? If if you feel like you're scrolling endlessly, it's draining you, you don't feel energized when you get off of it. That's problem number one. Number two, if you feel like that's not a good fit for you, there is another platform that's a good fit for you. If you love to write, it's blogging. If you love to do video, it's YouTube. There's other platforms that you can actually go to and use. So don't feel like, like you said, I think it's so important. Choose one. Choose what your what your strength is in yeah. and stick with it for a while. Yeah, I so agree. It, because it is about what you're good at. You know, a lot of us are searching and trying to copy this one and do that, like we already said, but it is about getting quiet with yourself in any area that you're trying mm -hmm. to be better at, getting quiet with yourself, finding out what makes you tick, what your gifts are that only you have and run with those. Whether yeah. it's a good speaker, you're a good communicator, you're good on video, you're, you know, there's, there's things that only you have. And I just want to yes. encourage you to lean into those because I know for me, I was for a while back kind of chasing other things and trying to find what I'm good at. It wasn't until I got quiet with myself. I started writing and I learned that I love to write. I love, I started journaling. I found out where my strengths were because we all have them, whether you know mm -hmm. it or not, <laughs> whether we you do. say, no, I don't, you know, yes, you do. You have, you're good at so many things and God blessed you with those things. Yeah. It's discover those. But the only way to do that is to get quiet. Like we said in the beginning of our conversation, get into prayer, start your day in prayer, whether it's for five minutes, three minutes or 30 minutes, it doesn't matter. Just get into prayer so you can feel grounded and be guided by God. Because at the end of the day, if you're on his path and if you're aligned with his will, you're going to fly higher than you ever dreamed of. And that lights me up, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think what you just said there is aligning with your values, right? Like yeah. if we if we adhere to our values and make sure that all of our choices are aligned with our values, that is going to help us make the decisions that are healthy for us and are going to not only move our business forward, but transform lives around us, right? And I think when we start looking externally, we're we're seeing things and that's holding us back from having an impact on those people that truly are desperate for the gifts that we have. And I love that you said, we each have our own unique gifts. And oftentimes when people start a business, they're, and, and whether you're in corporate or have a nine to five, or you are a business owner, the reality is we have to differentiate ourselves, right? And because God has made us so unique, we've also had very unique journeys. But there are people out there who are on a similar journey, just steps behind us that need our guidance, our help, our support, our love. So do the exercises to identify, okay, what about your journey has been unique? What experiences have you had that have given you the opportunity to now have a skill set to help someone else? And really, truly look at how you are different. Your values are different. Your gifts are different. Your skills are different. The way you think is different. And all of those things define your personal define your personal brand. And that's really at the core of your business or your career. Absolutely. I love it. I'm so, it, it just fires me up because it took me so long, Robin, to really- I know. Finds that out. And I just want to be honest. And you're not alone if you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know where my gifts are and my strengths. And, you know, it, it takes time. Just be patient with yourself. But I say, get your pen out in the notepad, old school. I am old school. I love to write. I love taking notes. And it's really, it, it's changed everything for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that. I, I'm so. I'm so with it. And I want to touch on mindset a little bit, just yeah. because I know that a lot of us, we struggle. I mentioned it earlier, but I just want to touch on having 
a winning mindset and what that looks like. And because a lot of us battle, I, the battle is in our minds, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Every single day. And I I heard somebody say, and I had written it down, it's on my desk actually, that you'll never out, outgrow warfare, but you simply must learn how to fight. And I want to just encourage you again with, you'll never outgrow battles in your mind because they're going to happen because we live with a real devil that is alive that wants to tear us down, tell us we're not good enough, tell us you can't do that business or you're not good enough to even be in the job that you are, you know, all the self-talk that goes on. I don't know about you, but I have a mantra. I'm very big on having a mantra and I started saying it two years ago that really helped me stay on top of the battle in my mind. And it was every time those negative thoughts would come in, I would just say, I will not be defeated by my inner negative voice. And I'd speak it out. I will not be defeated by my inner negative voice. I'd say it over and over and over until I believed it. I made sure I had it in my phone. I had notes. So I think it's... um, empowering for all of us to have something to draw from when we start going down that rabbit hole of fear or defeat or doubting ourselves and our gifts. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, how do you, when it comes to mindset, how do you stay on top of it and battle back so you can win the fight against the negativity that happens all day, every day? Yeah. Okay. This is such a great question, Kelly. And my this is all in my book too, You, Me, and Anxiety, because I dealt with all of the, these negative thoughts and the anxiety and the fear and doubt my entire life. And it and at some point I was like, enough is enough, right? Yeah. And I think, so I kind of lived by the model that our beliefs empower our thoughts. Our thoughts are going to empower our emotions, our feelings, which then determine our choices and our yeah. behaviors. So if I believe full heartedly in Jesus is my savior and that anything is possible through him, that I can do anything through the strength that he gives me, I can change my beliefs about what's possible for myself, what's possible for my clients, that people can come to me from anywhere at any time because his timing is limitless and perfect. Mm -hmm. So I, I start there. And that again, goes back to our original points in the conversation about having faith be like that, the actions of faith being first thing in the morning to ground myself. So there's that. And then it's a, it's a constant process of catching those negative thoughts, challenging them. Okay. Are these real? Are they accurate? Would someone that knows me and loves me and respects me be saying the same thing that I'm thinking about myself? Mm -hmm. And are these, do these sound like they're biblical or coming from the Holy Spirit? Or do they sound like they're coming from the enemy? And if they're coming from the enemy, it's like, Satan, you have no authority over me. Jesus already squashed you, you know? And so I I kind of have taken that, that route where, okay, is this real? Is it not? Is this healthy? Is it not? And if it's not, it's gone. But it took me years to be able to do this quickly, right? To be able to catch those thoughts, to recognize them and then challenge them. But the more I do that and the more I change those negative thoughts, the more I change the neural pathways in my brain to think positive thoughts over the negative thoughts or to be able to squash the negative thoughts before they get me spiraling out of control. And then what happens is I have more control and I have more confidence in myself, my abilities, what God has called me to, and just knowing and believing that he will equip me to do whatever he calls me for. I don't have everything I need, but through him, I can get it. Or through working with other people, like you mentioned, having a mentor, having a coach, having someone to hold me accountable for staying true to my beliefs, right? And then yeah. taking intentional action. Um, yeah, so that that's kind of how, and, the, and I, I, I often say, and, and someone said this to me at one point in time too, I'm like, oh, my anxiety. And it's like, oh, no, 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 don't own that. Don't speak that you own that out loud because that lets Satan enter in and take over, right? And give you more negative thoughts, more fear, more doubt. And fear is the opposite of faith. So if I'm a believer, that faith really has no place in my life. And so, you know, from that point on, it's been, and I'll catch my clients saying that too. Well, 
I feel weird or I'm weird asking this question or I have a weird question. It's like, no, 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 no. You're not weird. You have unique gifts. Let's see how we can approach this in a way that feels comfortable versus uncomfortable. So it's really catching those thoughts and then just going back to your core beliefs. And if, if you're struggling with those beliefs, then do what Kelly suggested earlier. And, and we're the same. Of course, we both love to write and get your pen and paper, write out those negative thoughts and write the positive thought next to them. When you do that, journaling is equivalent to meditation. So if you're like me and meditation is like just out there, it's not right. It doesn't work for you. Right. Then, then just that physical action of writing things down can transform your mind. Oh my gosh. I love it. It's, it's so good. And I call that. So for me, first of all, I want to go back. I was writing a few things down that when you actually ask yourself, are these thoughts of God? Are these thoughts real? When you really stop and think about it, it's silly, right? Like, <laughs> it's silly. like, oh, I can't do that. Or, you know, you're not good enough. Well, let's be real. Like, if you really stop and think about it, come on, you you know that that's not from God. Like, and I'm, I'm laughing right now, but I know when I'm in the midst of it, you know, I'm not laughing. Yeah. No, it's not actually, funny. It's not funny. <laughs> but when you when actually in it. say it like that. Know that God is so good. Know that he wants the best for you and gave you. He, listen, he appointed you for such a time as this. If you're yes. running your, with your dream and God gave you the vision, he's going to provide. You can keep going knowing that if you're putting your trust in him, you guys got that together. So it is silly when we actually think about what we think about, right? But mm -hmm. if you find yourself like me, Robin, for a long time, I battled fear for fear of a lot of different things that I won't get into right now, but I got so sick and tired of it. I was so afraid to, whether it was speaking out because there was big influencers on the call and I didn't want, I didn't know if I'd say things that they, you know, they're high up on the chain and I wasn't, and I'd be so fearful, fearful from breast cancer when I went through that. You know, I, I battles with fear in so many ways, but it was all in my head. And that's why I came up with my mantra and I've learned and backed on what you said, I've taught myself over time to repeatedly say things and speak life into myself over and over and over, whether it was the mantra I mentioned or my favorite Bible verse, which is Philippians 4.13. I have been saying that from probably 20 years Mm -hmm. Over, I have pillows in my house. It's it's everywhere. My kids <laughs> was the first verse my kids knew as kids when they were young. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. strength. I can't do it alone, and I know mm -hmm. that I'm accepting that. I I am in my humanness. I am weak, but in Him I am strong. And so this is what I put on repeat. Just even over the last four years since COVID happened in 2020, when I got quiet and we all had to be quiet and alone, I had to find ways to help me not be afraid, help me not be mm -hmm. fear, because, you know, a lot of us were on another level at that point in time. Yeah. So this is a practice. Like you mm -hmm. said, it takes putting in the work at the end of the day. What are you willing to work at in your life right now? I guess that's the question I want to ask any of the listeners. If you're sick and tired of feeling a certain way, or you're not making progress, what needs to change in your life? Whether it's a mantra, maybe you just throw in something to speak life into yourself. But the more you put these things into practice, maybe it's journaling, the more you'll end up climbing higher in your life, seeing results, finding new, you know, growth of growth is the key, right? We always mm -hmm. want to or else we're going backwards. But I just want to tell you, I'll end with this. Whatever you're practicing will progress forward and further. So practice creates progress. Practice makes progress in my, in my definition, because I've realized the things that I'm practicing, whether it's negative self-talk, telling myself I'm fat, telling myself I can't wear a baby, whatever it is. I mean, I've been there. I've, this is yeah. all, I would tell my, oh, every summer, don't wear a bathing suit. This is, uh, and I convinced myself that I couldn't do that. Like how and silly. Look at you. Look at you. You're gorgeous. And you, well, but you know you. what, Kelly? The same thing for me. 
all those years of struggling with an eating disorder and not yes. believing, not right. believing that I could just be me, who God created me to be. Yes. And, and, and it breaks my heart oh, now when right. I see young girls or women struggling with it. And it's, oh. yeah. And that's why what you said earlier is about creating new pathways in your brain. Yes. It yes. works. This is not like some voodoo stuff. Like you can literally change the way you think. It takes time though. You have to buckle up and you have to just know that it's, you got to run the race and not quit. You know, my, my new phrase right now that I'm saying so much is don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. Whether it's, you know, not quitting on myself, speaking, you know, whatever, apply it to how in your life, just don't quit. Don't quit on your workout. Don't quit because you didn't see results. Don't quit and stop eating salads because you don't feel skinny in a day. Like, just, <laughs> you know, there's so many things I get so excited because just don't quit. And if you need to rewire a couple pathways in your brain right now, stay on track, do it, write it down, get a mantra going and don't quit and really spend time with God because that's where everything will get better. Life is never going to be easy. Nope. It's not. It's a race. It's a, it's, it's, it gets crazy. We have kids, we're moms, we're business owners. We have all the things going on. We're going to be distracted by so many things, but you know, come back to God in that's at, at the end of the day, that's where you can find your peace. That's what we all want so much of, right? At the mm -hmm. end of the day, don't you just want to live with peace, contentment, joy? That's what you get when you walk your walk with God. So I, I that's how I want to end. And I, I don't know, whatever you want to add to that, but I could go on and on and we could talk for hours. I mean, I know we have I to wrap like up, just right? Getting going. <laughs> I feel like I'm just getting going. I mean, I'm just getting, I know. <laughs> my preaching is starting to come out now. <laughs> uh -huh, right. Yeah. So I, the only things I would add to that is that, um, discipline and gratitude are, if you can adopt a gratitude practice, if you don't have one yet at the end of every single day, write down three things you're grateful for. There may be days where you are so tired and it has been so, such a struggle. You may think I have nothing, but look, you've got a piece of paper and you have a pen in your hand. There's two things right there to be grateful for. Start small and work your way forward. Mm -hmm. Don't crowd everything in to one minute. Be yep. disciplined, be intentional, mm -hmm. apply gratitude. And then like I sign all my books, faith plus action plus grace equals hope. Yes. Oh, amen. Well, tell us all the listeners, what, what project do you have that you're working on right now or that, you know, how can people work with you and where can they find you and connect with you besides tuning into the Robin Graham show, make sure you guys are doing <laughs> that as well as tuning into addicted to the climb every single week. And I do want to mention one more thing to, if you love this episode and it lit you up, please share it with someone. You never know who needs to hear this kind of encouragement in their life, their business, their mindset, and their health. We're all in it together. And the reason why we do these episodes is to inspire you in your walks and in your journeys to not give up and not quit. Yeah. We would yeah. love that if you tagged us and yes. shared the episodes and, and, and subscribe to our shows. So Robin, tell us where they can find you and what do you have going on now that they can join you with? Okay. First, Kelly, because you kind of wrapped up, tell them, tell everybody where they can find you. I am kellytyan.com, K-E-L-L-E-Y, I'm an E-Y, T-Y-A-N.com. They can find my books there and my mastermind I have right now that uh, I have a wait list going for January. So, you know, you got to start early. Everyone's going to be ready for the new year. It's coming up really fast. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and they can find me at my podcast, Addicted to the Climb. That's awesome. So I basically have something similar. I am going to be launching a group program for January. It'll be a three-month program, and it will be for Christian coaches and um, service providers who want to really build that solid foundation for their business and just diving into what goes into a website and all those nitty gritty things that including mindset, faith, all of the things that go into building that successful foundation. 
And then as far as reaching me, of course, the Robin Graham show, and there's so much information, so much content related to the things that we've talked about today. And mm -hmm. so many inspiring entrepreneurs that I have talked to over the years. And then everything else about me, you can find on my website, the Robin .com. It's Robin with a Y and it's Graham, like the cracker, G-R-A-H-A-M. So it's therobingraham.com. And if you go to the resource page, there's a plethora of things there. So if you are interested in learning how to grow your business without social media, there's a free ebook there that you can download and it'll give you a great start to, to choosing where you want to be and where you want to put your effort in. I love it. Amazing. There's so many resources. You're never alone. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We're so appreciative of you. We couldn't do this without you. Like I said, subscribe to the shows. And until next time, stay faithful and keep on climbing. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week and we'll see you all next time. And that's a wrap, friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time. So I truly appreciate you joining me and be sure and visit the website, therobingraham.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success.